Meepo is the absolute king of budget boards, and this is the brand new V5. Hey guys, I'm Gabby from Ray Studios, and today I'll be reviewing the Meepo V5. First, as is usual on this channel, let's begin with a quick unboxing. This came in a box inside another box. Besides the board, we also found the instruction manual and a T2, the charger and the remote. This looks like a traditional longboard with the classic Meepo colors. Even so, I think Meepo graphics design have matured a lot by having more conservative colors and a smaller logo, we still have a giant orange arrow. At least you always know in which direction you're going. In the back, we can see the ESC and battery case. Next to the power button, we have four LED lights to indicate the battery remaining. I like the colors, the fact that the logo is now small and well placed. What's new with the design is the handle. I remember a couple of years ago when many boards used to have handles. I don't know why they stopped, but I'm glad Mipo brought it back from their entry level boards. This board is quite light at 7.8 kilograms and relatively easy to carry and with the handle is even easier to take with you everywhere. It's easy to stand up the board by stepping on the tail and you can pull from the front tracks like you would with most longboards, but with the arm fully extended. So you don't scratch the tail. Well, I'm five foot 10. If you are shorter, it'll be easier to pull from the front tracks. There is a tail guard and nose guard to protect the deck against front and rear collisions. The deck is made of a ply Canadian maple that is just a bit of flex to it, but isn't soft or bouncy. There is no drop down and a very gentle concave. It offers good feedback for your feet and feels very comfortable. And I think this is the way to go for this kind of board. This is where Meepo usually edge the other budget boards by giving more power per dollar you spend. Dual 540 watt hub motors, capable of up to 45 km per hour, with good acceleration and braking, with 30% climbing hill ability. I live on an area with many mountains, so this is where budget boards would normally suffer. The P5 can do some hills, but it will slow down a bit while doing so. Expect the battery to drop fast while doing so. More on that later. We have 7 inches track with 92A pushings. Meepo been using this track's pushing combination in many of the boards for quite some time, simply because it works. These are aimed at lighter riders, so I have tightened them quite a bit. These are quite stable when going fast and pretty good for carry and also for turning, with good rebound. 90mm wheels in the front with 70A a durometer and 90mm slip on the rear for the hub motor with 83A durometer. This is probably the first time that I see different durometers between the front and the rear wheels. These wheels actually feel not bad at all. They have a decent amount of grip, and as a hub motors goes, they perform well in bad road. You can also upgrade to the Meepo Donuts 105mm wheels, which they're better when riding over bad roads, but they may affect your range. The Meepo B5 have the latest and greatest Link E ESC. I don't think there is much of a difference between this and some of the other ESCs out there. Link ESC used to be a bit jerky, but that's not the case anymore. Accelerates and brakes smoothly and feels very intuitive. There is motor detection, so you don't need to bend down to turn on your board. The remote is really small, which is good and bad. In one hand it's lightweight and won't take much space in your pocket, but on the other hand it's very difficult to hold with gloves on. This remote doesn't have an LCD screen, which means this is a downgrade from the previous board, the B4S. You can still access all settings and check your battery levels, but you won't know the speed or distance. 
Mipo told me that the V5 is compatible with other remotes with LCD screen that are available for purchase on their website. So if you really care about that LCD screen, just spend a bit more to get one. As it is common with all the latest V and mini series of Mipo ports, this comes available in two versions, a standard and ER or extended version. I got the standard version with a 10s 2 b configuration with 8650 cells with 144 watt hours capacity. They estimated 18 kilometers of range, but tasked with a light rider in flat roads and ideal weather conditions. I'm 88 kilograms and I live in an area with many hills. Riding a bit aggressive, I get around 10 to 11 kilometers. Here's the thing, for most case scenarios, that's okay for me. I'll cover most of my daily commutes, but I know I can take this board in group rides. It won't make it back. If your weight is 75 kilograms or lighter, it's likely that you can reach the 18 kilometers estimated by Mipo on the website. But if you are a heavier rider, like me, you should consider buying the ER version. It won't only double the battery capacity, but also uses better cells. Another option to deal with the standard version is to bring the charger with you and charge the board while you're taking a break or in between commutes. The 3 amps charger can fully charge this board in less than 3 hours. In conclusion, this board doesn't seem very exciting since there isn't anything new or revolutionary like its bigger brother, the Mipo Voyager, which I'll review on this channel very soon. This board is a solid competitor for the entry-level ESK scene. The Mipo B series is the reason why this company has so many loyal followers. Their long-lasting boards with good performance and at a pretty good price. The B5 is promises to be another great success for Mipo. I leave a link in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up to help improve the algorithm. Subscribe if you haven't yet and click the notification bell to watch some of my upcoming reviews. Okay, that's it for me. Adios amigos!